To jest, to jest. Test, 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 test. Go ahead. Test, 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 test. Test. Right. Yeah, we're recording now, so. What's up, man? What's good with it, man? Dan, shit, chilling, man. Tristan Shop Talk, episode number 19. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming, bro. Yeah, no problem, bro. Thanks, man. Damn, it's echoing, huh? Yeah, I heard that. I don't know why it's echoing. Uh, here, try it again. Go test, ahead. Test, 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 test. Here, go ahead. Test, 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 <laughs> test. So what's up, Stan? It's chilling, man. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> test. Test, test. I think that might be it. Test, test, test. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, you probably, probably, if you just, I mean, where you, where you kind of hear yourself normal, like yeah. right there, like that's pretty good for me. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So you're mm-hmm. like, yeah, you're good right there. And then I'm recording. Got the wave file going. Yeah, man. So yeah, I took a step up, bro. Thanks for coming back because. uh Last time you came, there was a lot of issues with the internet. And yeah. A bunch of bullshit like that. So, yeah. Um, so I got all that going. And then now, uh, stepped up and here we are, episode number 19. Yes, sir. You know, so uh, hopefully everything after this is uh, just keeping it consistent and maybe have it more towards more, bringing more fighters, you know? Yeah. Any, you know, any fighters after or before mm-hmm. or uh, I guess... Yeah, like you, like we were talking about earlier, uh, you know, my interest is just fighting in cars. So yeah, this is pretty much along the same lines. You yeah. Know? So, so following along. Um, now, nah, man, to recap, last uh, last time Stan was going over from New Orleans, mm-hmm. Navy veteran. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we start. We can go way back. So okay. Because see, last time I remember. Going over, and you know, I kind of went over it earlier, but yeah, lot, I mean, earlier, I remember the video. We only got like 20 minutes, and like I said, the internet crashed, it was yeah. a big mess, so yeah, yeah, man, missed man. out a lot of good content, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, but but the whole story was you had moved here to Houston from mm-hmm. New Orleans, right? Well, uh, I moved from um, Washington when I got out of the military, mm-hmm. uh, I was gonna go back home, but um. I felt like the better decision was to uh, move to um, move hit, move down here. My pops was already out here, um, right. so it wasn't like a super hard transition. I kind of had a little support mm-hmm. coming out here. He helped me uh, basically just get on my feet, and um, I had a place to stay. Had you know, I didn't have to really blow cash uh, trying to find places and spend all this money everywhere. So he helped me like kind of get stable a little bit, then um, kind of set up my new little life out here. Nice. So, nice. yeah, been out here since. That was in 2019. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's year five right now. But I remember also speaking about that the whole point of joining the military, too, was because you were already interested in boxing before, mm-hmm. you know, when you were living. Yeah, I was back yeah. home. Uh, like, I, I wanted to box, and I kind of just wanted to focus on boxing. Like, but I had no money. I was broke. Uh, yeah. So, I was like. I needed to do something to kind of get myself supported and then be able to focus strictly on boxing. So I thought I was going to be able to do that when I was in. Couldn't really get that done. Uh, But now that I'm out, um, now I can just, uh, well, literally all that, like now that I work at the gym, literally all I do is box. Like everything involved in my life is around boxing. Yeah, you you breathe it, sleep it, eat it, everything. Yeah, 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 that's what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, because when I, when I got out of the Navy, I went straight towards, because uh, obviously I went to school to go finish off the degree, mm-hmm. and then when I finished off the degree, the um, um, the whole point, I guess, of the degree was to, uh, yeah, I'm hoping this is, yeah, it is recording, yeah, it has to be recording. Now, I'm... I'm hoping that the 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 mic is recording straight to the wave file. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I I had wanted to be in the fire department, so I went and got out and I joined Twenty Four Hour Fitness and I just started working there. It was mm-hmm. like you know they weren't paying me much, but I mean I was just like a towel guy there. I yeah. wasn't doing what you're doing, like doing classes and mm-hmm. doing all this training and stuff like that. So, but I wanted just to prepare myself, you know, for the fire department. So I was training hard, right? And then going through the training. I mean, meaning I was just there, so I would wake up. 
after before uh, after my shift, I would just work out for like an hour and a half and then go to school, and then that was my my life. You yeah, know, because I was also getting the money from the VA to go to school because I was already out of the navy. Yeah, so it, it helped out, you know, on that on that point. And yeah, yeah, I totally agree. You know, like you know, you needed a, something to to bounce off of. Just yeah, to keep it, keep something it, to help you. Like, yeah, yeah, something to back to to fall back on. But I mean, when you also hear like all these stories of like other uh, fire, uh, not firefighters, but other athletes or anybody who's athletic and they're in that that mindset, they're um, they're pretty much uh, how can I put it. Um, sacrificing you know mm-hmm. they're like sacrificing man like, you That's know man, I, just, I just want to box you know or i just want to or i uh i just want to swim or i just want to play basketball so they do anything they can just to be around that yeah and so then you know they're just they're it's like a win-win because as long as they're around it you know they're winning you know yeah it is what it yeah, is yeah, yeah, the rest yeah. of the shit can you can, you'll figure that out oh uh, another one i was bouncing off of was uh like laird hamilton he's like a uh surfer you know like world class surfer. Doesn't mm-hmm. really he doesn't he's never been in a competition, but he's been into uh like going into uh, surfing the bigger waves, big this, big that and mm-hmm. all that. So when he was younger he said that all he cared about was just uh, he said that he was uh, his job was like to be a model. So his model job money would just in hand and pay for his surfing trips yeah. to go surfing and you know, now he's known as the most biggest surfer in the world you know and then, what's his name again uh, laird hamilton larry hamilton yeah 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 because uh late, lately i've been on this whole deal with uh surfer movies yeah. recently you know because because a lot of it was interesting because a yeah. lot of it you know they go through struggles and then they go through and they just want the perfect wave they're just surfing it's a competition yeah you know you're getting over the break you got to get out there fight for the wave this and that you mm-hmm. know so it's a big competition and i thought it was also kind of relative to like fighting you know because you know it's it's a competition. You know who who who's the better one? Who's right. the better? Who's better? Who's better? You win some, you lose some. Mm-hmm. And then that was another thing. I guess you know I, I was gonna stem around to, but uh, I know we're going all over the place. But uh, but it was was uh, winning and losing. You know, so so that that like going into that competitive uh, mindset of of competing, being prepared. You know, like you said, like I was going back to now. I'm going back to like sacrifice discipline you know mm-hmm. you, you working at the gym doing these classes just so you can solely concentrate on yeah. boxing you know which is pretty cool man so i mean um i know when you you said you moved to houston and then that was what year was that uh 2019 2019 uh-huh. and then after that then you got into uh, you said you were uh, training at different gyms yeah right? i was bouncing around everywhere man like uh uh, what was it Orange Theory Nine Round? Basically, uh-huh. any any place that was a gym that mm-hmm. kind of could like I could not have a super strict schedule because of I wanted to be able to go spar or do whatever and like like. And what anything. what part of town were you living at with your with your dad? Because this is this is uh, before the Navy, right? No, nah, this uh, is after the Navy. It's after the Navy. Yeah, after yeah, the yeah. Navy. Uh, in twenty so twenty nineteen, I was in uh, Mo City, Missouri City, for like. That for about like the first six months when I moved out here, because that's where he's at, um, mm-hmm. right out in Missouri City, uh, 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 the nice little neighborhood too, uh, Lake Olympia out yeah. there, yeah, and um, staying with him for a little minute, uh, then I moved out to Stafford, uh, by myself, and now I'm out in Sharpstown moving with, uh, I moved in with Blake, me and Blake are, uh, oh, wow. roommates now, so oh, wow. yeah, um, and we're just chilling, uh, but yeah, I bounce, I've been bouncing around since I've been in Houston. Honestly, just bouncing everywhere, anywhere that I can be, and just uh, focus on boxing. That's it. it. Like that's that's just been my main goal, just focusing on boxing. Yeah, man, badass. And then you recently, twenty twenty two, because I believe yeah we had that one, uh, episode seven. Mm-hmm. Damn, that was, I don't know, like able to. I think that was that was like what, 20, 2021 was it yeah so yeah. since then you had how many fights so uh last year alone so 2022 was a busy year for me um last year alone i think i had 11 or 12 fights uh, wow i was in all the tournaments uh, i was in two national tournaments and i had that tournament out in canada so uh, yeah 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 i little, remember hearing about that one i, I guess like a, a quick recap um beginning of the year was regional golden gloves uh yeah. state golden gloves um 
wait, yeah, regional, state golden gloves. After that, we went to... Uh, yeah, see, that one was Canada. June, June 9th, 2021. Yeah, and I, that was right after uh, uh, golden gloves last year, oh, 2021. So that was like right after my first um, major golden gloves win. And then I won it again last year. Um, then I went to uh, state. Went to state after state. Uh, we had to wait a little bit for nationals for some reason. Like it was like a couple months later. Um, yeah. We went to me and Mike and Coach um, Leroy. We all went out to Canada. Went out. Uh, when me and Mike both won gold out in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we came back. I went to national Golden Gloves. Won national Golden Gloves at Cruiser, uh, one eighty nine, and then um, fought at like a few other like local. Spots coach Cap, uh, he's he's another coach out here. He put a nice little show on. I won one of his tournaments, and then uh, finished the year off at um, national qualifiers for the Olympics, and I got runner up at heavyweight. No so shit. yeah, I got silver medal. The I, I got the silver medal at uh, heavyweight and qualified for the <clears throat> Olympic trials, and that was like that was in December. So so, what's your path like right now? Like, what are you going towards? Uh, that's actually a good question. Yeah. Um, the the end goal is pro, right? Yeah. Just, I want to go pro. Um, the main thing right now is kind of just we're in like this little limbo right now because uh, I can't be in any major national tournaments because I already qualified for the Olympic trials. So we're just trying to find fights. It's hard for me to find fights, especially in Texas. I didn't fought everybody out here, yeah. uh, so it's. Like real hard to find fights out here. We're trying to go back wow. to Canada, yeah, uh, for like another tournament because like I I got a lot of love when I went out to Canada. Like that was probably one of the better tournaments of the year. Um, I, I got we uh me like I said me and Mike won gold there, and I got uh the MVP of the tournament. I didn't even know that till like a couple months later they had sent the the trophy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, and like build up a solid little fan base out there. Like surprisingly, I think I got more fans in Canada than I do in Texas right now. Wow, no um, shit. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, the main thing right now is working the GoPro. So I like uh, I'm trying to clean up some things in my game right now. So I want a few more amateur fights for sure. But I do want to. Uh, we're going pro this year. That's yeah, the yeah. thing. Right now, it's all logistics now. Just like yeah, yeah. trying to get some, you know, a little support, some backing stuff like that. Uh, cause at the end of the day, all that stuff costs money. If you don't, if you ain't got a promoter and nobody's signing you, all that stuff costs money and I'm broke. So, uh, we just, we working out the logistics right now, seeing what we can do. Um, I do plan on wow. fighting in Canada one more time. We want to fight in Vegas and another yeah. tournament and then, uh, hopefully debut around the summer. Right. Um, right. So that's that's the work in progress path right now. Uh, everybody was talking to me, asking me if I was going to do the Olympics. Uh, the main thing, the main reason why I'm not sticking around for the Olympics, that's still kind of up in the air. That's not like all the way out the yeah. door right now. But the main thing is just waiting so long because I'm already 30, you know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to wait too long. Um, but uh, if we could... If if it made sense, I'd stick around for the Olympics, you know. So it, yeah. we, me and coach still talk. Me and coach talk every day about like what's what's the next yeah. move and all that. Yeah, but how do you survive during Olympics to even train for that to even get up to that? Man, I know it, Olympics they're real stingy about that. You know, it, the whole it is. You know, it's like um, a big hole. Like you can't even. You just have to be. You know. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If you if you're not on the like so they, what they call it the high performance team that's mm-hmm. like the U S team basically if you're not on the high performance team it's kind of hard because they're like the high performance team USA boxing is gonna back you the whole way as far as like getting you there money wise all that stuff um if you're not it's a little bit harder because you basically gotta provide all that stuff yourself yeah, yeah and that's a long tournament um so. Uh, that's the main reason why we're still like iffy about it, just cause like, do we want to waste time or right, like spend right. all that money and figure all that stuff out? That's still like that's at the end of the year, you know. Um, it'd be great experience and all that, but it's it's just the uh, like I said, the logistics. Like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. if it made sense, we'd stick around. Right now, it's not making the most sense, so it's yeah, kind of yeah. at the bottom of the list. So uh, 
Hey man, it's, yeah. it's a tough game, man. Real tough game, man. It's yeah, a real yeah, tough yeah. game. You Un- stay unforgiving trained. game, yeah. Yeah, you gotta train. You still gotta stay in the mix. Yep. You know and who's coming never out. knowing yeah. what's about to pop off. Never knowing, like, okay, should I do this? Should I do that? Blah, blah, blah. You just gotta take whatever comes in front of you. Some type of opportunity pops up. That's why you always gotta be ready. So if an opportunity pops up, you can take it. Yeah. Just any any type of fight, honestly. So. And then, you know. I mean, we can ask, go into that too. I mean, it's a, it's a different uh, game than it was when Mike yeah. Tyson. And, Much know, different because you know, the, the 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 Jake Pauls and the YouTubers kind of kind of uh, <laughs> muddied the game up a little bit. You know, yeah. they've been bringing some good things to the game, and they've been bringing some bad things to the game. And like the good thing is just a little bit more exposure to people that normally don't watch boxing. Yeah. The bad thing is don't nobody yeah. give a damn about good fighters no more. You know what I mean? It's like. How yeah. many followers you got? Like, who are you at the end of the day? You know, and I respect it, like, cause that, like, you is who you know, you know. Um, and like, why would somebody yeah. want to watch you if you don't have like forty thousand followers, stuff like that? But it's, yeah. it's kind of hard now, cause like they're just stepping in the way of a lot of the guys that are kind of pushing and working towards or whatever, cause we don't have the the background, the financial right, right. background, and all that to get in that same position that they're getting in. Cause not everybody wants to fucking box. It's almost it's 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 bad now. It's like it's almost as bad as like rapping. You know, everybody's a rapper. Everybody's a boxer now. Well, no, because I, I, I feel like Jake Paul. He like uh, came across. He came across like or stumbled because he was already right. training, mm-hmm. doing, doing, doing. I guess doing what he was doing. He's oh, well, I'll just go ahead and you know now I'll go ahead and. Maybe I'll challenge somebody that's yeah. famous or challenge an old fighter, and then, mm-hmm. and, and, then and then you know, I mean, he's making money. I give him that, but yeah. like, yeah, like, he, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's losing the uh, authentic. Or I guess it being authentic or yeah. it being no, just that's, like a that's, true, that's like it right a true there. fight, you know? Yeah, because yeah. it, it's kind of that. P- but see, I feel like even after Tyson, maybe there's a few other fighters that were like still in the game that were making it interesting, but mm-hmm. then it's still kind of. That, uh, yeah, it was. I don't know if it had to do with just greed or promoting and that, bad promotions. And, that's it too. Pro, yeah. Like the greed part of it, the because the promotion, because everybody has a promotion. Like everybody's putting their hands in a pot, you know. So it's so many different people control. Like there's too much competition as far as like fighting goes. So now it's like it doesn't matter if you're the better fighter. It's like why do people want to watch you? You know right, what I mean? Right. Like the. <coughs> Because it goes into, uh, it goes into, uh, I, I mean, like, I remember going and not looking forward to actually watching a De La Hoya fight with mm-hmm. my family or on a Saturday night or we went to a friend's house. Actually, in this neighborhood, um, considering going, playing, uh, you know, I was young, but then I was still interested in a, in a fight. It would be everybody would get together and there would be like a big, pretty much like a barbecue or whatever. Mm-hmm. Everybody there watching the fight together because it was a big deal. Watching yeah. De La Hoya. It might be De La Hoya against, I don't know, who was at the time. I mean, no, no telling. But my point was, I, I felt like it kind of lost that whole, that whole kind of, I don't know. Yeah. That, um, that, that. That's just uh, mostly the, uh, like the average the average boxing fan um, just doesn't like the average boxing fan doesn't care about uh, the names like they used to, you know? So it's like, if it's right. just not a big name fighting, like nobody's interested. Like it, it people only want to see the super fights now or now because of the YouTubers, they want to see like the right. the circus fights. Like, okay, who who's Jake Paul gonna fight next, or what rapper is gonna fight this guy next? You know, so it's the social media kind of muddied it up a little bit because it like the the purity of the sport is is dying off a little bit. Like the, right. the uh, there's not that many boxing purists that are relevant now as far as like. Who's who's watching who? Like the average boxing fan doesn't know like who's the top prospects coming up, right? They only know who's that superstar guy. Like they only know like people still talking, like waiting for Floyd fights and stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right. There's there's so many fighters right now that's only up and up, and like the 
the the main thing that's kind of messed up, I guess, like the the average person interest is there's there's no like there's no great heavyweights anymore. Mm-hmm. Heavyweight boxing was what kept like a lot of eyes on it, right? Oh right, yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's what no, I'm saying. Like, like, yeah, like you yeah. said, without like because Mike Tyson's gone and, or he's not <laughs> active like that anymore, and then yeah. like like uh, the the main heavyweights we got right now is Fury. Wilder, Anthony Joshua, and they even talk best about Fury too. Though. Yeah, you know, and you know, and you know, it's it's like, just there's not there's not a lot of like there's no huge American <laughs> heavyweights that that are getting like, yeah. recognition right now. So the 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 average viewer just doesn't care. They, yeah. they just don't care. They like you have to get them. You have to get them in. Like the attention the attention spans of most people have gone down over these last years. So if you just if you just got two solid boxers. Nobody gives a crap. Like, yeah, but yeah. if you got this circus freak that's about to fight this other guy, like, like a guy like Tyson Fury, he's damn near seven feet tall, you know, and he's about to fight another oh, guy yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. seven feet tall. People want to watch stuff like that. They yeah, want to watch that, the crazy that, shit. That was what twenty twenty was that early twenty twenty two? Uh, with the the Tyson Wilder, Fury, the Wilder fight, or just yeah. Fury yeah. in general? Fury, I mean, no, yeah, no, 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 the Wilder and the Fury. Uh, was that early twenty? Was the third fight? Early 2022, I think. Yeah, I think the third fight was. Because I think that was, like, compared to, like, back in the day with Mike Tyson. And yeah, because that, that was the, the biggest name. So, I mean, yeah. they've already fought three times. So, nobody yeah. like nobody wants to see that fourth <laughs> fight. Like, nobody yeah, wants to yeah, see that fourth yeah. fight. But there's there's just not that many big names, like, as far as heavyweights go. Like, or, and then, once again, the YouTubers, stuff like that, they kind of muddying up the game. <laughs> and um, it's it's... It's. I feel like it's coming back around now, especially with mm-hmm. like a lot of these lighter weights that are coming up, like like uh like welterweight and under right now, like crazy names right now because you got like like you got the Errol Spences, Crawfords, uh, yeah. then you going lower, you got Shakur Stevenson, Loma, uh, uh, Devin Haney, all these names like that, <laughs> and now they're fighting each other, so it's it's uh, Tank Ryan Garcia, you know stuff like that, so. Now they're fighting each other, so it's kind of bringing back a little bit of the glory days. But, uh, but I mean, you really think what was really initially stopping it? And it's like you said, there's a lot of like just too many people having too, too much, too, too, too like the Floyd effect yeah. kind of ruined it. Yeah. Just because, like, once Floyd started making his money and promoting himself and doing all that, everybody wanted to follow suit and be Floyd. So, like, now you got like you had a whole bunch yeah. of other guys like basically just doing exactly what Floyd was doing, like. I'm not gonna fight this this contender unless you're giving me a big piece of that pie, you know. And yeah, then right, right. you yeah. got this promoter, this promoter, that promoter, that promoter. All of them want a piece of that pie, so these fights never happen because you can't you can't fairly split that money between all these people. Right. So there's there's like back in the day there wasn't that many major promotions. Now. Like now, just off the top of my head, you still you got top rank. Uh, uh, Showtime, the Zone. Um, yeah, 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 there's a lot uh, more. Now. There's like, like, there's, there's too many promotions, and it's not a like this. Uh, I can't even so backtrack if I say it's not a bad thing, but it's like, it's only a bad thing because these promotions don't want to work together to make super fights. And right. It's because of yeah. the money. It's just yeah. money, 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 money. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, you're the hot one going, yeah. going. And then that, that was another thing I was gonna say too. Is like back when I was younger. I used to think like for a minute there, Mike Tyson would never lose. I was mm-hmm. like, he'll never lose. He'll never lose. Like that's Mike Tyson. Like he's perfect. Like, and then you know, you know, hearing little things like going on in his personal life, or hearing other things, mm-hmm. and then boom, then you saw it. You know, then he took. You know, and he lost. Yeah. And then, yeah. How did he lose? And then oh yeah, he lost again. And then then he came back. And then then here, you know, it just. A roller coaster of just you know a fighter, and then now that I'm older, you know I kind of look look at things now, and it's like yo, I mean a lot of people win and lose, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people lose, and a lot of people win more, and then yeah, it's just this the way of life, you know, and but that's the sport, you know, and, that, the- and you know, and then, then that is the sport, you know, like like I used, to, but I used to always think, oh yeah, there's there's other guys out there that are like Mike Tyson, they're gonna have a total knockout, mm-hmm. you know, all the way, but then again. As you get older, you find out there's more to promoting the fight. There's yeah. more to behind of who's fighting who. There's more behind of 
how much and this and that. And then it kind of, like you're saying, it loses the whole, it's even worse now because it loses the whole, like the, the, the concrete of just a fight, you know, two guys are good fight, you know, this yeah, guy but, walks away. And but that like, goes back to that Floyd effect too, because Floyd <clears> went through <throat> his whole career, no losses. So and now everybody looks at that, that, Oh, so bad. Like, it's like, dude can be 70 and oh, he lose that one fight. He ain't shit. You know, yeah, now yeah, yeah. like like the yeah. the the mass media is like this guy sucks now because he lost that one fight. <laughs> Back in the day, motherfuckers was losing left and right. Like Marvin Hagler uh, lost his no, what is it? A draw for his first title fight. I think yeah, it was a draw for his first title fight. Then he he was losing fights before he even got his title. Like it's that's just how the how the game goes. Like this this sport, you gonna lose. Like not everybody can get out clean. You yeah, know, it's a yeah. blessing to get out of this sport with with that zero. Yeah, but two people are afraid to lose one, and the fans have made it so like these guys are afraid to lose because people are talking about it. Man, why can't why isn't this guy fighting this guy or this guy fighting this guy? And it's like, well, this guy doesn't want to fight this guy because if he so happens to lose to this guy, whether he puts on like the best fight of his fucking life, right, right, right. if he loses to this guy. The average fan will look at this guy like he ain't shit. All that <laughs> shit he did, he dude was an undisputed champion four times. You feel yeah, me? Crazy, but yeah. he lost that one time. Now he ain't shit. So it's like it's kind of like I don't blame the fighters because I blame the fans and me yeah. being a fan person because I was like that for a minute too because I was looking like coming up as a kid too. Yeah. I was looking at that zero like oh man like if you lose you really not much. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like no, that's what I was saying. Like I, 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 but then I, I, you know, I was thinking about the other day. I was like. You know, I don't know why I was, used to put, you know, like a gauge and yeah. like if you can't lose none, if you lose one or two, you're like you ain't shit. It's like, no, nah, man, it's just the way it's it just the way it is. You lose, yeah, yeah. you lose. But if yeah. you come back, you yeah. you can come back yeah, from yeah. a loss. Uh, yeah. uh Lomachenko lost his second fight. Yeah. The dude lost his second fight, his second pro fight. I think he was three hundred and something in amateurs. Yeah. Lost his second pro fight. Then came back and won the belt. It's like, bro, lo- losing happens in combat sports. Like, because mm-hmm. anything can happen. Like, you can be, you can literally be winning for all twelve rounds, right? And that last ten seconds of that twelve round, dude, mm-hmm. drop you. You go to sleep. That's over. You lost. So, is that fighter a terrible fighter because he he yeah. he got lulled to sleep for the last ten seconds, or did he just get caught? Yeah, yeah, he yeah. just got caught, so let's see him do it again. Let's see yeah, right. what let's see what happens when he comes back. But the average boxing fan doesn't want that. The average boxing fan wants undefeated fighter, undefeated fighter, undefeated fighter. And then gets mad because these undefeated fighters don't want to fight undefeated fighters. It's like, bro, <laughs> if I lose to this guy, you gonna take my whole you gonna take my whole plate. Now yeah. I ain't got nothing. To, I can't eat off this no more because you don't want to see me fight because I took one yeah. L to a guy that's also undefeated. You know? It's a rough so, life, man. It's a rough life. The game fucked up, man. It's yeah. fucked up right now. So it's like, I don't blame fighters for doing what they do, going doing their runarounds with mm-hmm. these contracts and all that. I don't blame the fighters. I blame the fans. Yeah. We we as fans, this is including myself, we as fans yeah. have to change the culture of fighting so that the fighters don't give a damn no more. So the fighters will just fight. Cause like, look at MMA, man, you got guys that you got like guys in MMA, their records be like 18 and 10. Right. And they're legends, hall of famers. Like, and it's like that guy was a champion. He gave you some great fights and it's all love and all respect. But if you got the same boxer with a record 25 and eight, you kind of look at him like he was decent. You know, he might have, he, yeah. he did get the undisputed, but he lost it to this guy and this guy, he lost, he lost his last three, whatever. And then you shit on him. So now you got these young dudes coming up and they're like, shit, I'm not about to fight this guy. Cause just in case I lose, I need to make sure I'm tip top to fight this guy. Like there's no, why would I take yeah. a risk if you're going to take everything away from me for that one loss? There's no need to take that risk. So the, uh. game, the game fucked up. That's all. Hopefully it changes. It may change. May not. We don't know. Um, I don't want to be the guy to try to change it because I don't want to lose. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like I, you said, I mean, the the game is. Uh, I mean, because I I almost feel like even on MMA, MMA is pretty kind of up and down too. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's, it's yeah. Just, but I I, just, I feel like there's still more room for error in MMA. Oh, yeah, there's, yeah. there's a lot more room for error because you can a lot of like 
it's still the fan base I feel like is changing a little bit now mm-hmm. too, where they're acting like boxing fans a little bit, where these guys can't excuse me, where these guys mm-hmm. can't take these losses. But the 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 MMA fans are a lot more forgiving than the boxing fans. Yeah. The MMA fans can see a guy, he gave you a crazy fight, amazing fight, that guy gets a standing ovation on his way out even though he lost, right? Mm-hmm. In boxing, some like a lot of times, the guy gave you a great fight. It was nice, blah, 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 but he lost. So now everybody's talking like, man, does he still got Is he still that guy? Is he still good? So, yeah. man, he just lost to a, a guy that's equally as good as him. Yeah, it, yeah. That's, it, it is what it is. Let that guy come back and let's see him do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you just don't, you don't get that, that room for error in boxing anymore. Yeah, yeah, Because that, that O is so important. It's so important right now. But see, that's what I said. The the whole game is just. I mean, like I said, Ryan Garcia, seeing him against the tank that that, that might be interesting, mm-hmm. and that's finally gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And I'll definitely pay to see that mm-hmm. um, coming up. I mean, but like like you said, it took so long for it to happen. It took long, and then for a minute there, I was thinking. Uh, I think even just watching back on podcasts, uh, hot hot box podcasts, and then I guess Ryan Garcia was talking mess or calling him, and they're mm-hmm. like Facetime and. Then, they were making history, apparently. But then mm-hmm. that shit never happened. That shit was like three years ago, two years ago. More people, more, <laughs> more money in the pot. And then especially because you had Tank was on Showtime. Garcia's under Golden Boy, so he's with yeah. Zone and all that. And that's that goes back into the promotion. So now these promoters have to talk. And the money has to be right because everybody wants to get paid. Like, there's so many more people behind the scenes that need that check, too. Not just the fighters. Not just the their camps. Everybody that's involved with you got people that just they're just there just to be there. Uh, they need that money too. So that's just like it's ex- that sounds exhausting, man. It is exhausting, yeah. and I'm, I ain't even been a part of it. But it's exhausting <laughs> just just realizing like eventually I'm yeah. gonna have to go through some stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's very exhausting. And that just brings up the politics too, because the politics just make it so bad with boxing. Because it's it's it, yeah it's back to back to the the fans and stuff like that. Because people are so afraid to lose because the fan base will will drop you in a heartbeat, mm-hmm. you know, compared to back in the day. Back in the day, we, we used to, or or I can't even say me because I was not born yet, but I'm talking like way back in the day, they used to they used to uh, marvel over the guys that just had heart, you know, that just came in, gave you a great fight, win or lose, like that he's still a really oh, yeah, good, yeah, yeah. good fighter because yeah. it's like, man, this dude came out and put his heart on the line. Like, I respect this guy. I want to see this guy fight again. You could do that. You could be that same guy now in boxing and they're just like, yeah, but he lost though. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to see him fight anymore. He just lost. <laughs> like, he's, he's, he's not undefeated. I don't care about him. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to see undefeated guys fight. I want to see this guy fight this guy. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's. I feel like it's slowly changing. Some people are making comebacks and stuff like that. But the this all just like I said, it's the average boxing fan. The average boxing fan doesn't care about the guy that lost. Well, I mean, I I see more promotions happening in Houston, definitely. Mm-hmm. And I see more. I ideally, I guess they're now doing what hybrids. So they're doing more yep. hybrid promotions, and that's yep. pretty cool. Shout, so out, shout out to PCS. PCS yeah, 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 they did. Yeah, Paradigm, Paradigm uh-huh. did uh, PCS one, and they did PCS two. Mm-hmm. So they're and then they're they're doing hybrids, where it's a lot of different fighters, and then so it's boxing. So would you say they're ideally doing Paradigm's doing more boxing concentrated? Or yeah, it's Paradigm? more it's more boxing concentrated, yeah. but they're also giving local MMA guys a shot to get get a little bit of buzz too. Yeah, um, just to just to add a little more flair to it. And it's just, you know, bringing in more people. So, like, the average MMA guy is like, hey, I want to go watch this guy fight. And then he sticks around for a boxing match. He's like, oh, that was pretty nice. Maybe mm-hmm. I should watch some more boxing, you know, because th- that match was nice. And vice versa. Like, uh, the boxing guy comes in to watch the boxing matches. He mm-hmm. sees the, the MMA matches were pretty good. And he's like, man, that was kind of interesting. i like to see a little bit more of that. So, I, yeah. I like the hybrid events. Um I I know it's a little weird for the MMA guys because they have to fight in a ring, you know. So I, I wish it was an easier way to to mm. give them a better opportunity for they can fight in the cage. But I mean that's that's like we're talking <laughs> futuristic type stuff, you know. You got to yeah. get what you got to get. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I I feel like they 
it, it's it's working right now. You no, know? no, no, no. Be better ways. Yeah, yeah, no. They're definitely a good promotion. Yeah, and then definitely they're doing their part and like promoting the fights. And, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, at Paradigm One, that one, that one there was, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it got a little crazy, man. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, it was it was pretty crazy yeah. towards the end, even during and then, uh, like you said, there were some good fights on that one, and. I, when I when I when I actually gave me going back when I was in the Navy I was stationed in Virginia and then mm-hmm. I went to a promotional fight out there. It was cool. It was, yeah. I went on a took, MMA. Took, yeah, I took took woman, this girl and was woman on a date, and then uh, it was cool because it was just like a promotional fight mm-hmm. and hung out, drink some beers, and just watch the fight. Yeah. It was badass. You just watch the people fight, and then I feel uh, now here in Houston, it's like yeah, I hope there's more. And it, and on my end, it just sucks because sometimes they're on uh, Sundays, you know, or or because uh, I mean I, I hear about, but it's more that's more towards MMA. Um, but I know there's escape. Uh, but lately, I know there hasn't been that many. I mean, there's been like I said, Paradigm, and I know there's been a few promotion, other promotions that have been towards bo- mm-hmm. boxing, right? Yeah, I mean, like like a few. It's not like yeah, it's definitely been more MMA with yeah, like Fury, uh, yeah. Elevate, um, yeah. I can't think of the other ones, but yeah, Fury and Elevate. I know, like those MMA joints pop off a lot. Um, and then we can, I mean, we can even talk about that too, because even then, I mean, a lot of a lot of promotions are going to our MMA too. You yeah, know? they're steering away from boxing, and I think, I think there's still, a, yeah, like you said, there is, there's definitely a crowd out there who's interested in boxing and who likes to go see boxing. I like to see boxing. Mm-hmm. I like to make a night of it, you know, if I can. Um, but then of course there's MMA, there's MMA too, but then like, you know, some, most of the MMA is, uh, Fury, like you said, and a few other ones. And then those, um, just MMA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Uh, um, and I mean, it makes sense for them to, to stay focused on the MMA side too. Cause, uh, there's, I feel like, uh, especially with the younger crowd, um, MMA is more attractive mm-hmm. uh, than boxing because um, boxing at the end of the day is still like it's more purists that are really interested into the boxing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the a, a casual combat sport fan will enjoy an MMA match over a boxing match just because of there's more room for excitement. In the MMA yeah, 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 yeah. They're hoping to see like a crazy but, kick, yeah, crazy they're, knockout, yeah. flying knee, stuff like that. I mean, I can't even go into talking about like even when you talk about football. Mm-hmm. Uh, I heard this other day too, like football. You know, a whole game is. I mean, a total. What I, I I don't even know what the total minutes are, but they were saying that out of the total minutes, a really good football, you're really gonna see total. I guess. All together, maybe twenty minutes yeah. or twelve minutes. Yeah. When you add it all together, because mm-hmm. you see two minutes here, two minutes there, two minutes, two minutes here, because mm-hmm. you're gonna see these plays happening. So, I feel it's almost like the same thing with fighting. You know, like when, and especially MMA. You know, these people are trying to go for, like, blood on, blood yeah. out, like you know, open, open cuts mm-hmm. and only just five, big, yeah. five rounds max. Yeah, you know, you like know. five rounds for championship <laughs> stuff like that. They're uh, like three, f- three minutes, maybe five minutes. I guess yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. That's which is crazy too. And it's just like, oh man, dude. Like, I get it, but yet again, it goes back to promoting. It goes back mm-hmm. to like to get even to get that shit going to get fo- both fighters to agree on some shit like that. It's a lot of things involved, yeah. you know. I mean, to get even to have that good of a fight, you know. Yeah, and I feel. um I don't know. I just hope it does go back to like some type of, uh, like a like like back kind of kind of just like you were saying, having that whole flow of of good fights, mm-hmm. just just good fights, you know, like somebody that just wants to see a good fight. No, no, just you yeah. Know. I feel like it's slowly getting back to that. Slowly getting back to that, but. And, I, and I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep attacking the fans for it. You know, that's yeah. where it starts because because yeah. at the end of the day. These promoters and all that, they're they're just doing what would interest the fans at the end of the day, like what brings in the fans, you know. If more fans come out and say they wanna see like these good fighters fight and if they stop shitting on the guys that lose, then the 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 
cultural change a little bit, you know? Because yeah. that's all it is. It's the, the culture of the game for combat sports have changed. Everybody wants to stay undefeated. And that's <laughs> that's the goal, right? The goal is to win. You, you never yeah. go in there asking to lose, but the shit happens. So it's like there shouldn't be that big of a penalty for a loss. Yeah. But in in boxing especially, it's just a huge penalty for a loss. Like, you lose and they look at you like you're crazy. I got I got kids in the gym that I train. Like, I'm an amateur. You know, they ask me, like, hey, like, have you lost before? And I tell them, like, hell yeah, I lost. You know what I mean? They like, go, oh, pfft. He yeah, they probably go off to the side. They're like, yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, damn, yeah. Coach, coach, didn't lost, coach lost a couple <laughs> fights, man. He ain't that good. He can't be that good. They didn't ask me how many I won. They just asked me how many I lost. So it's was like, damn, okay. Like, yeah, but no, but that is a good game show because you yeah. know how kids are. They're just like, you know, this is like, yo, man. like, like but They go off of whatever they see. Yeah. And they see guys that's undefeated, you know. So it's they like, expect, yo, not everybody's undefeated, not, man. Yeah, like, that's yeah, not how it like, goes. Yeah, yeah. I got to explain that to the kids. Shoot, yeah. like, you, in the amateurs, you know how many... There's, if you ask the average amateur fighter, they don't tell you their record. They tell you how many fights they got. Like <laughs> you, you ask like, "Hey, how many fights you got?" You don't ask, yeah. "Yo, what's your record?" You just say, "What? How many fights you got?" Like dudes will have. I know guys 60, 70 <laughs> fights. Don't ask their record though. Hey you man, know how many losses? <laughs> yeah, don't ask the record though. Like you'll be really uh, surprised know, of I mean, how many uh, losses the amateur guy has. I know how many I fought. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, hey man, I fought seventy times. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know my record. But yeah, and like that's that's what I be trying to tell the kids too at at the gym. It's like, yo, man, don't worry about the record because amateurs always. But maybe that's a generation thing now. Now they're 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 like so wrapped around not making mistakes yeah. that like they can't. They got to be pitch perfect. They got to look. Perfect. Everybody's watching. They got to look. Yeah. yeah, look this way. Like, Everybody. I bet. Watching. Yeah, I bet you. I'll be analyzing that too. If because I know you do those those classes for mm-hmm. paradigm, and then you're doing this with the kids. So mm-hmm. I know you probably. You know, you probably like, huh? Like <laughs> everybody, everybody's watching now. Man. You're, you're, you're not memorable. We were, you know, of course, in class and you know, whatever PE or yeah. whatever coach, and then we were probably, man, that coach over there, you know, whatever. Now things turn, you know. Yeah. Like, now you're the coach. Kids, kids ask me every day about records, <laughs> this and that, man, and like, like they, they expect, especially. Especially if, if they hear you won like championships and stuff like that, they expect to hear like, "Oh, right, the coach ain't never lost." I was yeah, like, oh, man. But but that's <laughs> that's also an important lesson to teach them too. Yeah, it's yeah. like, "Yo, you, it'll happen." Yeah, like like a loss will happen, especially in these sports. Don't worry about it, cause cause you will lose, but you'll come back stronger from. Yeah, me. I keep on thinking of that. Uh, in Friday, you know. Uh, you, know, you win some, yeah, you lose yeah, yeah, some. You win some, yeah. you lose some. <laughs> that's how Fight it is. another day. That's, that's all it is. It, it's going to happen. Day, you know? It's going to happen. Stop yeah, worrying about yeah. the losses, man. I, I, every time they say something, like, stop worrying about the losses. I got, I, uh, um, you know, Ruth um, at the gym. Uh, oh. She's a, she's one of the boxers. She's an adult, though. But mm-hmm. Ruth lost her first one, won her first one, mm-hmm. right? It happens. Like, like she lost oh, her I first fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She lost her first fight. I got another kid, Aubrey. She lost her first fight. I lost mine. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It happens. Losing happens. Like, But if you sit there... Uh, I had a, It's funny that we even talking about this because we were at the gym yesterday and me, Mike Wynn, and a couple other guys were talking like about competing, the experience and all this and losing and stuff like that. We had like mm-hmm. a real deep deep ass conversation like at mm-hmm. nine nine thirty or whatever at the gym and um <laughs> and uh the guys a lot of the guys were just talking about like how they were scared to compete because of uh the loss like they were scared of losing they were scared mm-hmm. of that and like me and mike were both saying like yo you would never ever improve in this game if you go and you worry about the loss especially in amateurs because this is when we're supposed to lose yeah, this is yeah. when we're supposed to take our lumps right yeah and, like this is all all this is for experience so right, right. don't sit there and let the worry about a loss eat you up man because if you if you let that eat you up you're gonna lose because that's all you're thinking about now <laughs> you're just thinking like shit i don't want to lose i don't want to lose i don't want to lose so you if you constantly thinking about that in a match you're going to lose because because yeah, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. would you? Why? Why would you win now? Because like you're not even thinking about the great side of it. Like you're not even thinking like, okay, I'm about to go in there. I'm about to win. You're thinking, man, I'm going in here. I might lose. Oh man, yeah. I might. Lose. Like of course you might lose. It's a fifty fifty every time you hop in the ring. Yeah, you're giving yourself the complex already. Yeah, you're yeah. either going to win or you're going to yeah. lose. That's it. Yeah. That's that's the for sure thing that happens in the fight. You're either going to win or you're going to lose. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, like so. Why worry about it? Just go handle your business. 
I mean, me on me personally, it's not even the losing. It's just me. Just I want to be prepared mm. for it. So um, maybe those people are saying, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, they're scared of losing. But then, like I said before, you, you yeah, that's where then a lot of that discipline, sh- you yeah, know, discipline comes in because the discipline is going to be based on, uh, yo, know, like, like I, I think me and Ari talked about that. Um, about like just when you're gonna bring it to the table man, man you better have slept you better have ate made weight you know all the things that then you know I, like you know better than i because you're the competitor but i can only imagine like what it partakes mm-hmm. you know because you're you're trying to bring your 100 percent or 100 even more than that 100 plus and then bring it to the table and then be ready which like you're saying like if you're already doubting yourself then you're already lost yeah <laughs> the 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 only thing yeah. you can do for a fight is prepare for the shit you can control. That's right, it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. You can you can you can make sure that you're in shape. You yeah. can make sure that you're on weight. You can make sure that you that that you've been training. You've been handling that, all that stuff. Right. The stuff you can't control is uh what what your opponent's doing. The nerves. Oh, all yeah, that extra yeah. stuff. You can't control all that crap. Yeah, so yeah. don't worry about the stuff you can't control. Just make sure the stuff that you can control is on point. It'll make it a little bit easier. I ain't going to say it's going to make it perfect. Yeah. It ain't going to make it an easy fight. But your fight will get a lot easier if you're like, okay, all this stuff that I know I can physically <laughs> control, I can take care of before I hop in the ring, that's taken care of. Yeah. So I just checked all this crap off my list. That's a little bit less stress I, I got walking in here. Because the uncontrollables is going to happen regardless. Right. I, I can't do nothing about yeah. that. So... Why stress over it? If yeah. I know that's going to happen anyway, why stress over it? And then, and then I, I feel that just falls like with any competing or any yeah, competition. No, that, like, you that's know. in life. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? You yeah, handle yeah. you handle yeah. what you can control. Yeah. So the the whatever you're tackling is just a little bit easier. That's yeah. all. Because 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 that'll help the confidence part of it too. I'm I'm terrified before every fight. Absolutely yeah. terrified before every fight. Yeah. But the one thing that kind of helps me reassure that stuff is like, I know I've been training. I know I've been running. Yeah. I know I've been doing this. I know I've been doing that. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's reassuring myself. I'm like, look, you've been doing this, 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 and that. So you ain't got to worry about getting tired. You ain't got to worry about doing this. You ain't got to worry about doing yeah. that because you know you've been handling your business on this side of the things, right? So just go in there, handle your business like that, and then... The, those extra variables that pop up in this fight, you're just going to have to handle that in the fight. That's just yeah. that's just part of adapting in a fight. That's another part of the fight game. You got to adapt. You got to... Yeah. Like, that's why we got corners. That's why we got coaches. That's why there's rounds. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it's just not one long-ass fight. It's like you got rounds. So, okay, I've been preparing for this, but he just showed me this right, in, right. in this round. So after if I made it through this round, I do what I do so I can make it through this round. Then I get back and I'm like, okay, what what me and coach, what can we do to make sure this next round is better? Or right, what can right. I do to make sure we continue fighting the way we fight? Like I've been in both my championship fights in mm-hmm. nationals. I got dropped in the first round, mm-hmm. both of them. And the the immediate thing when well as soon I got back to corner first thing coach asked me are you all right you're good blah 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 I'm like yeah I'm good I'm good just you know shook me up a little bit I got yeah, dropped yeah, I yeah. figure it out Ooh. now it's a new thing right now yeah. I got to figure out how to adapt to this so coach talks me through it walks me through it whatever that was something I couldn't control in the fight he like like I wasn't coming in the fight expecting to get dropped I got dropped right so now I got to adapt to this now. Yeah. I got to do what my training, what I've been training for all this time. Mm-hmm. Got to use, got to dig deep in my bag now and figure right. out, okay. Like, like a Jedi. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to figure out what I got to do now, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. that's that's where you would, you come together. You That's also why you should have a coach that you trust and you believe in. So mm-hmm. you can sit there and this guy can walk you through it. Or this woman can walk you through it. You feel me? So that, that. Now I'm prepared for it. Okay, he dropped me. We talked it over. We figured out what we got to do now. What I got to do to prevent me from getting dropped again. Now it's my turn to go drop him. Yeah, yeah. So regroup, assess the situation, adapt to it. Let's push forward and keep moving. Yeah. So so that, that, that's just part of the game. Like 
shit is going to happen. You yeah. know I mean? This is a fight. Shit that's unexpected is going to happen. So right. don't sit there and worry about the unexpected until it happens. Once it happens, then you regroup, you figure it out, you push forward, and you adapt to it, and you keep working. And then, you know, because I feel some losses happen because things aren't just in the right place at the right time, mm-hmm. you know? It's, and, it's, and this it's just life, part bro. Of it. Yeah, you know. This is this the game. Part of it, you know? This is a cruel yeah. ass game, bro. <laughs> this, 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 this sport, this sport it ain't for everybody for a reason, man, because it's. It's it's cruel. Like that ring doesn't care about what you got going on outside. The, the ring don't care about nothing. The ring look, when you all them stories you see leading up, like the little undisputed, the the talks, all that stuff leading up into a fight. Yeah. Once you get, hop in there, the ring like I don't give a shit about none of that. I don't yeah. care. I don't care if you you fighting for your kids. I don't care if you fighting for your mama. None of that. Yeah. You fighting this guy standing across from you. So go handle your business. You feel me? And he don't care about it. Yeah, yeah. That, that that motherfucker standing across from you, he got his own issues too. Yeah. So he not worrying about your story, none of that. That's just two <laughs> stories clashing. It's whoever's will is stronger, yeah. whatever better fighter is that day. Yeah. He'll handle their business. So it's this sport you can't you, you you can't sit there and worry about all this stuff and hope that because I got the better story or I got this, like I right. hope I'm gonna get out of there. It don't matter. Shit don't matter, man. I done had people come up to me after fights saying, like, this is a bucket list thing for him and all that shit. I'm like, okay, well, cool. I'm glad I helped you with your bucket list, man. Like, cause <laughs> my shit was bigger than that, so I got to keep it moving. Like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ring does not care. It yeah. does not care. But, about but see, that's why I tell people, too, though. I go, I mean, even if you're, if, 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 I mean, even if you're running once a week, getting to the gym once a week, like me, like I said, I might not make. Maybe in some circumstances, maybe there's too much things on my plate, mm-hmm. but I will make it. You know, I I feel um, competitors like yourself. Yeah, yeah, y'all, you you you're you're on a different level. Your level is you have to. Yeah, it's part you, of your you routine. Figure it's it your out. life. You know, I mean, me. You know, I got a lot of things going on, but yet again, at the same time, I want to. I I do make it a point to go to that gym. Mm-hmm. I do make it a point to at least do some cardio. Um, I do make it a point just to, you know, at least if by the end of the week, at least I've after my busy schedule, all the things I've been taking care of, at least I've made it in there, do at least an hour, two hours, you know. So at least I say I did it, you yeah. know. Um, but I feel like another another thing is is that when you're you're peeing, I yeah, you that, that's 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 your you're breathing it, you're living it, you're <laughs> you're you're all in it because you have to, you have to you be prepared to. for everything that's there, you know, yeah. and then. And then you have your, excuse me, you got your David Goggins who were like, oh man, this dude, I was uh, hearing one of his podcasts the other day and then he was waking up at 5 in the morning, 5.30, mm-hmm. running 12 miles, um, coming back. I mean, this is his life, running 12 miles a day. I thought he was waking up. I mean, I know he, I know he runs a lot, but I was thinking maybe 5 miles, 6 miles. No, this dude's running 12 miles. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's no different, man. And that's what I'm saying, man. This dude just like it's like, and then and then you kind of like you. you look, I'm not saying, and then like, and he 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 enforces and tells people, don't try to compare yourself to me because I'm a yeah whole other level. And I feel there's levels, but it, it I, I feel then it goes back to like we were saying earlier, like like to the having zero losses, man. Sometimes people just gotta stop and realize, hey, man, like. Like you have to adapt, you know. You have to relax, chill, like you know. And, and you're and, not that guy that was like that guy that got that that retired undefeated. <laughs> I'm not the same person, man. Just, Floyd Mayweather. You, you, uh, you're, you're your own fighter. Well, I mean, I'm trying to be Floyd. But, yeah, yeah, okay, Stop. man. That, that's a good. That's a good uh, thing to 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 you know dream about and you know. And, and want to shoot yeah. for and all that, but then it's like, come on, bro. It's like, just be you. Yeah, yeah, just be don't you. Be yes. Floyd. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. You got, you got to stay, uh, stay in your lane, they say. Yeah. You know, you got to stay in your lane. You know, don't be just, too busy chasing Floyd's legacy. Like, build your own. Don't worry about all that, man. Floyd did his thing. You do your thing. Like, that's, that's the issue. Because be even in my personal things, you know, I, I just do a lot of things. I do a lot. But but then I stay busy. That that's that's how I cope mm-hmm. with, with just doing staying busy. You know, I have things that I stay busy with. I fit it in, stay busy, stay busy. Um, keep other things going so I can pay for things. Keep things going, you know. But then again, like I said, I always fit in a workout in there. 
I want to be doing more. I want to be strength conditioned. I want to wake up every day, (laughs) go hit the gym and be there two hours, you know? But it's all about just like, you you know, it goes back to discipline and fitting it in and just doing Mm -hmm. it, you know? And then with, with that, yeah, it's just, it's just, like I said, I always, I'm just going to the conclusion of just me respecting, you know, what you do, man. You know, athletes, you know, you're, 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 you're disciplined. You do what you got to do. You're staying in the game. Uh, Man, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. The lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. So then now, like you said, so right now there's no penny fights coming up right now, right? Um, Most likely going to do Golden Gloves okay. again in okay. March. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's the only tournament yeah. I, I can qualify for right yeah. now. Uh, so we'll probably do Golden Gloves in March. Um, uh, my My tentative schedule right now is Golden Gloves in March. Uh go to state and then there's nationals right after that and wrap that up, right? Be done with golden gloves. Um <clears throat> and I bumped up some I'm heavyweight now. I'm fighting at two oh three now. So Oh wow wow. Yeah. So, what, were, what weight were you fighting at originally? Uh one eighty nine cruiserweight. Okay. Yeah. Well oh, wow. I, I started at one seventy eight light heavy. Uh mm-hmm. won golden gloves at light heavy. Then I won last year I won at one eighty nine. Um and then towards the end of the year, I, I like for qualifiers in December, I yeah. bumped up to heavyweight because I just uh, we just trying to get belts anywhere now. So you just are you just like maintaining like a strict diet, or is it just like are you are you, are you, are you, are you, you know are you? When I'm in camp, yeah, my diet is strict. Uh, right now, no, I'm no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich, my diet's not strict. <laughs> no, I'm just just working out yeah, 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 uh, yeah, consistently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, as far as the strict diet, when I was fighting at cruiser, yeah, my diet was a little stricter, especially mm-hmm. at light like, heavy. My diet, I had no choice. It had to be strict. Mm-hmm. Um, cruiser had a little more free time for my diet. I can open up a little bit more of my diet. Heavyweight, uh, it's a heavyweight, so I can kind of just eat, you know, <laughs> but like when I'm in camp, I'm not just fucking up and eating all type of shit. It's yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta I, put some bases yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, I can... Protein, basically, protein. it's it's almost the same stuff. I just eat more, you yeah. know? I'm just eating a lot more because um, I don't have to worry about the cut. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, like, I, the... the the diet, the diet is just it, the amount of food just went up. Um, yeah, and I definitely treat myself. <laughs> definitely treat myself. Go eat something, you know, eat something nice here and there. Uh, when I, but when when we start to lock it down for this camp, getting ready for Golden Gloves, yeah, like the my diet will switch up. And when's Golden Gloves? In March. Oh, for, in March for Houston. Is oh wow. March March first. Okay. Um, uh, first through the. Fifth, I believe. And when will camp start for that? Uh, I mean, it's technically already oh, started, started right, but yeah. as far as like my diet and everything, it'll yeah, probably yeah. start in February. February yeah. yeah. Um, I was coming off a little bit of a, a little, little sickness or whatever this week, so kind of lack like backed off the training this week and just yeah. make sure I was good. But I've been sparring. Uh, shoot, I've been, got I got with this one guy from Maine. He's a pro. Uh, Janik. Um, with Janik, he's a dude from. Poland, nine and one. Uh, been training with him lately. Uh, got some work in with uh, Darius Fogram. Um, nice. Uh, last year, him. Uh, 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 who else? Uh, we're just kind of bouncing around. Uh, Jalen Stanley. He's another guy uh, that's a pro out here. Just been giving work with like anybody. Um, nice. Honestly, that I can yeah, go yeah, in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's his name? Fa Apochi. Uh, got some work in with him out down at uh uh. uh uh, what's the what's the gym? Um, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I got some working with FA Poetry. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, Darius you're about to just, you get some, just get working, some. man. Anybody that that says I can come through, get some work in, like I'm pulling up, yo. Know, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's, so that's real. just we've been working, still sparring, still training, you know, gonna yeah. pick it up a little bit more moving yeah. forward now that we kind of getting ready for something. Um, uh, uh. But yeah, uh, uh, just pick the sparring up a little bit, and then um, get real serious for these next couple of tournaments. Like trying to finish finish out this amateur career a little bit. Uh, I'm at 24 fights right now all together mm-hmm. from my amateur career. Uh, don't know what I want to finish on. I don't really care. Uh, yeah, 20 fights. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, as long as you keep 20, 20 fights was the. Was the goal honestly at first? We was like, yeah, let's fight twenty. But then last year, man, I was fighting like 
and everything that popped up. So I got I got to fight eleven times last year. So mm-hmm. uh, I at least want to fight like five or six more times before we call this amateur thing a wrap. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, and I and like I said, I want to go back to Canada. Uh, we're mm-hmm. gonna go back to Canada, like it's probably like uh, early summer. Um, we're going to Vegas in May for like a title invitational, mm-hmm. and then there's Golden Gloves. We're gonna make it the National Golden Gloves. I want since I won it at cruiserweight last year, the goal is to win it at heavyweight this year, so I can have two titles there. Um, and and yeah, call it call wrap this this amateur thing up, and then hopefully go pro. Um. Cool, man. We'll we'll see. I don't know where the debut. Uh, the I would love to debut in Houston. Um, <laughs> if uh, yeah. you know, got to talk to some people, see what's going on with that. Um, that's still in the works as far as debuting. But that's that's the thing about Houston, though. I definitely know there's a fan. There's there's fan base here. You know, there's, I I have a fan base yeah, in Houston. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. like family alone, like shit. Yeah. I, can, I half my family from Mississippi come out here in a convoy. You know, to pull up <laughs> to one of my fights. Yeah, so yeah. I know, like I can get fans and stuff out here. But it's it's, it's me talking with the promotion and stuff right now. So I just got yeah. me and coach got to get together, um, see what the best move is. Um, and honestly, right now, you know, the money's right. Like. I'm right, at right, this right, point right. now where I feel like I can negotiate certain things um, and uh, go from there and see, you know, who like who, who wants to put me on their show. Because, like, if I'm on the show, I'm going to, one, I'm going to bring fans. Two, I'm going to bring a show. I'm going to bring a fight. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm that guy at heavyweight right now. Have so. you ever thought about going to, like, different cities? As like far as like like Texas, like to, just with to the, debut or just for for, for amateur? For am, well, no, just just I guess yeah, amateur. So yeah, amateur. Yeah, I mean that's the goal. Like I mean yeah. we we was traveling, but like you said, you, the, just the, yeah. the funding and all that. Yeah. you know, the but logistics. You know, yeah. last year we managed to travel. I went. Uh, I fought in Oklahoma last year. Uh, Canada. Um, yeah. um Lubbock. I mean, still Texas. Uh. uh Okay, so yeah, you've you've I, already, I traveled yeah, a little so done, bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the eleven you did last year, yeah, you've done. Yeah, like we moved around a little bit last year. I want to kind of do that again this year. That's why I was saying we was gonna go to uh, Vegas and um, Canada and stuff like that. Uh, I, it's just finding fights and finding the the tournaments and stuff too. So that's another issue. It's just USA boxing is a little iffy with these tournaments and all that. So it's like yeah, there's not too many big tournaments, you know. So just got to kind of find them. Look, look, I'm on all the Facebook groups trying to find some type of tournament, you know, because I just want to fight. Like, it's hard, it's hard for me to fight in Texas right now. Like, I, I fought damn near every guy here at three different weight classes. So, it's, right, it's hard right. for me to find a fight out here. Um, but I ain't got no problems traveling, you know. The, obviously, the money be a little issue here and there, but we'll figure it out. Like, we've been figuring it out for the last couple of years, so we'll figure it out if, yeah, we, right. if we need to get somewhere. Um and then when I go pro, just it is what it is. We'll fight. Shit, I'll fight. I'll debut in Australia if somebody wants me to fight out there, you know. <laughs> so I I have no issues with traveling. My passport ready to go. Um, uh, like like I said, I like you don't be surprised if you see me out in Canada uh, okay. making a lot of fights out there, you know. Um, no, because I mean you hear them. You hear them basketball. Yeah. And uh, and. Basketball, it it is uh, kind of uh, like going to different leagues and different just to kind of just kind of get out there, you know, because yeah. you know you get so concentrated in America's, you know, mm-hmm. leagues and that, yeah, yeah, it just if you don't like you're saying if you don't make it for that, then you know, go yeah, somewhere else, yeah, you got to go somewhere somebody, else. Yeah. Somebody, will love you somewhere, you know what I yeah. mean. So don't get complacent staying in the same spot because that that's an issue with a lot of amateurs too. Like we 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 stay in whatever city we come up in, and like you might not be the favorite guy in that city, even if you're winning, you might not be that guy. You know, there's there's like it's still politics in amateurs, so like you might not be the guy they're looking for the boost. So yeah. go somewhere else. Go yeah. somewhere else that that's going to respect you. That's going to uh, show you that love. You know. Yeah. So I ain't got no issues moving, debuting somewhere, and going handle my business, beating <laughs> up some guys in a whole other country. You know, then coming back and then <laughs> making a big splash when I come back out here. You know. So 
Uh, it just it is what it is, man. Whoever's mm-hmm. watching, like we we ready, we ready yeah, for yeah, it all. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, like I said, I, I I'm, I'm hopefully have another episode. <coughs> hopefully have a better camera for next time. But this is uh, where where I'm at now. So yeah. then now, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to just promote more mm-hmm. or do more. Just where I'm concentrating. I, ideally, it's going to be a lot of uh, fighting, MMA, boxing. And then also I'm I'm going trying to bring also just anybody that that just needs to like you said you know man you're you're, you're doing something so that's my main interest on this podcast like yeah. I said my main interest on this podcast is just anything I'm interested in I'm bringing it on mm-hmm. you know and talking and seeing where that person's at and their you know in their yeah. journey or in their quest to get where they need to get yeah so. well, I, I appreciate it yeah. I appreciate you bringing me on here yeah, man yeah. Yeah. well yeah. I appreciate it man yeah but I guess well, I guess we can go ahead and end it off on that too. All right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, this ain't going to be the last time. Yeah. So definitely. So. Yeah. 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 So, so now, like I said, now it's kind of turnkey. So mm-hmm. now it's just come back and then, you know, now it's only, you know, go forward, you know? Yeah. So for sure. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate but, you, big dog. Thanks bro. Yeah.